an Innovation Lab production. In partnership with Seminole Community Library at St. Petersburg College. Supported by our Curiosity Creates Grant. A partnership with the Association for Library Service to Children and the Walt Disney Company. The Seminole Community Library is a joint use facility in collaboration with the St. Petersburg College Seminole Campus in the City of Seminole. A unique feature of this library is their Innovation Lab, which is a collaborative learning environment, oftentimes referred to as a technology playground or makerspace, that is open to the general public where people of all ages and with common interests, science, technology, engineering, digital arts, and math, can meet, socialize, and or collaborate while sharing innovative ideas and learning new skills. The Innovation Lab offers a variety of resources, including a growing list of emerging technologies, books, magazines, and interesting people with a variety of skills and experiences to share. The Innovation Lab exists today because of grants funded by the St. Petersburg College Foundation. A special thank you needs to be extended to retired Seminole Campus Provost, Jim Oliver, for having a tireless and forward-thinking vision that helps support the growth of the Innovation Lab on campus. The Innovation Lab offers various workshops ranging from building a synthesizer and virtual reality to sewing, computer programming, and video editing. In early 2015, the Innovation Lab invited drone expert Donnie Klotz to do a workshop. Donnie discussed the variety of drones available to consumers, showed how to assemble the popular Phantom 2 Vision drone, and discussed what is involved in flying a drone to a group of hobbyists. Donnie captured this video of the library while his drone flew above us. St. Petersburg College student Dylan Harvey provided a hands-on workshop on Arduino. Dylan showed that the Arduino is a powerful prototyping platform that is an easy way to engage in the world of circuits and programming for all ages and skill levels. Everything from powering a single LED light to controlling a fully interactive robot can be achieved using the Arduino. Esteban Valdez is an award-winning, classically trained artist and animator who owns Echo Bridge Pictures, a full-service animation company based in St. Petersburg, Florida. Before I really get into any you know, heavy topics, I'd like to show you some of my work. After Esteban's lecture, he offered a free, hands-on, and engaging animation workshop to a group of eager students who were fortunate to learn vital art skills and what it means to be a professional from a true expert who is actually working in the ever-growing and competitive field of animation. Inside the Innovation Lab, there are no judgments, no grades, and it is encouraged to color outside the lines and to make beautiful mistakes. In October 2015, the Innovation Lab received a $7,500 Curiosity Creates grant from the Walt Disney Company in collaboration with ALA's Association for Library Service to Children to expand their successful maker boot camp that helps promote exploration and discovery for children ages 6 to 14. Imagination and originality, 
flexibility, decision making, communication and self-expression, collaboration, and motivation are the critical components of creativity that the Maker Bootcamp has integrated into their curriculum. For the college, I teach a 16-week course on video game development, and we take video games and we tear them to pieces. It's kind of comp one for video games. With the um, project I was working on, of course, I only had about two hours to work with. So I took my class down and condensed it to basically two main projects. One was a short history of where video games came from, which was an entire class with my 16-week course. And then we took about 20 minutes to actually try out. We call it analyze video games. We don't play video games, we analyze video games. We look at the levels, we look at the interface, we look at the various parts that make a game work. We use a uh, game engine called Game Maker, which is free. Really nice program for building basic little arcade type games. You can build Pac-Man type games, shooter type games. Uh, we build a little game called Catch the Clown. And then you take a basic game and then you start modifying it. That was one of the things the students really had a good time with in the class was taking Catch the Clown and adding multiple clowns and multiple backgrounds and different things that they could bounce off and scores and sounds. And you can take the basics. Once you have the basics, you can go beyond there. The old adage, you have to crawl before you walk, you have to walk before you run, you have to run before you can fly. It's the same adage with video games. If you can start building the basic parts, then you can move on beyond that to be building more complex and more interesting games. These are electronic circuits, right? That were basically sensors that turned my alarm on if somebody opened the door. Um, like I said before, you guys already nailed it. My phone has got a um, little circuit board in it too, right? And like you said, computers, everything. everything. So, when you start to see how this stuff works, you're going to start to understand how things around you work, which is very cool. So the introduction to robotics workshops were fun and interactive for the kids even for the parents who stayed. A few kids have come back to the library to spend more quality time working with their favorite robots. On these EV3, there's a demo program that comes with it, so I'm just running that now. And you can see it can move forward, grab it, back up, and then move the other way. And what's really nice about these robots is that you have a little screen that you can also display text, pictures, images, different things on. As you start going the more advanced um, microcontroller systems, like Arduino or VEX, you, got, you don't have this screen anymore. It's just a blank piece of circuitry facing you. And sometimes it's refreshing to see a screen where you can at least tell what's going on. reality workshops were probably everyone's favorite because there has been a lot about this technology covered in the news lately, but so many people haven't tried it out yet. They did, however, get to experience it at Maker Bootcamp. Some of these kids are even starting to learn Unity, a powerful game development platform, in order to create their own virtual realities. I'm nine years old, and my favorite part was when we did the virtual reality, 
It, it literally felt like I was in a different world. My name is Tina, I'm Sabrina's mom, and I enjoyed all of the classes, especially the virtual reality. We went out and bought Google Cardboard glasses, and I also enjoyed the circuitry, seeing how the, the pens that are coming out that will allow us to draw our own circuits. So I learned so much, and now I can be the cool mom and know what this technology is about. So thank you very much. Hello, I'm Chris Demons. I'm a freelance photographer and videographer, and I had the privilege of doing the video and stills from the Maker Boot Camp from November. I had three wonderful classes of kids, and they learned about video editing and a little bit about the, uh, the cameras and the process of getting video. Uh, they edited the footage I shot in iMovie, and they seem to have a really great grasp. They picked it up super quick, very bright. I'm Ayana. And I'm Nia. And Nia's very glad to have had this opportunity. She really enjoyed learning uh, throughout this program. You want to talk about what you learned? It was fun learning about technology. And I liked doing the iMovie, it was fun. Um, what I hope they learned is that Video isn't something that costs a lot of money, it's more about the effort you put into it and to the composition of your shots and you know what you do when you get it back to the computer to edit it. That's what makes it a good video, not spending $10,000 on gear. I learned a lot about how to change colors and add audio and just a lot because I really didn't know much about editing before this. And so yeah, I really appreciate you guys having us here and I appreciate you guys doing this for the film thing. I also, I enjoyed how you guys let us do our own thing. You guys didn't make us do a certain thing that you wanted. You let us do our own thing. I really appreciate that. I really hope that the parents and children especially have been enjoying our Maker Boot Camp series. And my goal, I think all of our goal, is that the kids will get excited about this new technology and the way things are going and that they will want to learn more. They will go home and experiment with some of the things that they've learned. Hello. My name is Sophia. One thing that I enjoyed a lot was the technology. So, like the BB-8 Sphero, the moving cubes, programming cubes, and a whole bunch of other things that were here. I also liked being able to create videos and edit them too. So, I added music, I added transitions, there were a whole bunch of very cool things. Hello, my name is Luca, and the thing that I think I enjoyed the most is the programming. I liked all of it, but I think I liked the programming the most. Joe Storm, I remember, came to me uh, some time back with an idea of applying for this grant, and she had mentioned that um, it was funded by uh, the Disney Corporation, I think Disney contributed uh, something like $700,000 to the uh, Association for Library Services to Children, which is a division of the American Library Association. And that money was uh, divided among uh, many, many public libraries throughout uh, the United States that applied and were accepted for the grant. And our library, uh, Seminole Community Library at St. Petersburg College, was one of those libraries, we're proud to say. The grant is intended to work with public libraries that either already have or are in the process of establishing a maker space, um, a maker lab, some type of uh, facility or service in a public library for youth, children to come and experiment with 
with technology and with media and to create. And the emphasis of the grant really is on creativity, curiosity, uh, to use that technology in creative, fun, innovative ways to uh, really open the minds and imaginations of children and teens. And we're really fortunate here at, uh, at our library, at Seminole Community Library, St. Pete College, to, to already have a space in the library facility, the Innovation Lab, which was established by the college and uh, is, uh, works in partnership too with the, the public library side of, the, of our partnership. So we already had a space that had, was in, uh, in operation and we seemed like the perfect candidate uh, for the grant when we applied and uh, we were really confirmed in, in our enthusiasm when ALA informed us that, that we would receive it. So we, we've taken uh, that money gratefully and have now uh, turned it to really great use with a, a program we call the Maker Boot Camp um, that has been headed up by uh, Chad Mayern, Information Services Librarian with the college, and with uh, Jill Storm, our Youth Services Supervisor on the public library side. And together, um, they and others have put together an excellent series of programs that you'll be hearing more about. Our library is really fortunate and proud to, to have this grant and we hope that uh, it's going to be a great vehicle for children and youth to uh, really do some creative, innovative projects and get excited about technology and media. The second Maker Boot Camp series ended with a new beginning at our Maker Fest celebration. It was a time to reflect on the past workshops and to look to the future to figure out the next educational path that we all want to take together. Whether we explore in more detail video game design, robotics, 3D design and printing, virtual reality, circuitry and electronics, video editing, or whatever else is just over the horizon, we all know that we will be dreaming thinking and creating together. Oh, <laughs> yeah,